Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Savix and in today's video we will be going over the pre-raid best in slot, best in slot gear, and the talents. If you got the info already, feel free to leave. <laughs> but if you want me to go over them, stick along, sir. So this is the pre-raid best in slot. Gonna be giving you a few options as well. Um, this is for PvP, Knight Lieutenant Plate Helmet. Very, very good, gives you a crit and a hit chance. Amazing. However, if you don't PvP, you can go for the Embrace of Lycan, which drops in Zophorak. Every gear I go over, you can see on the side where it drops from, okay? And if you want to use this website, feel free to. It's amazing. If you already have the Tempered from Blacksmith, uh, feel free to use this. This is probably going to stay best in slot as long as you use the cooldown. But if it's on cooldown and you're at the next boss fight, you probably want to swap over. For the necklace, I'm going to go ahead and put the Nomar gone. Um, if you're going back now, it's a level 40 content. should be a lot easier. There's still people going back in to farm their trinkets or other best in slots. That helps out. Um, speaking of best in slot, you can get the insulated chest and the insulated leg guard, which is the leather piece from Nomar gone. It's still pretty rate biz. If you want to do the quest in Badland, you can go ahead and get the Warforged chest plate. But I recommend having this. Might as well get the two set since the leg piece gives you the hit chance, right? And then you can get that free critical strike. Going back to the shoulders, you can get the Dreg Metal Spalders from Black Rock Depths. If you have Blacksmith, you can go ahead and get the Shoulder Pad of Dread. All you have to do is clear up to the sixth boss, I believe. Eranicus. For the cloak, this is going to drop in Black Rock Depths as well. 25% chance, not bad at all. If you don't want to farm this, you can go to No More, get a cloak there, or get the cloak from STV event. For the chest, I already went over, you can either get the quest item from Badland or the insulated. For the wrist, I usually don't recommend the reputation grind since it's a lot and some people don't like PvPing, but they kind of made it free where you can go to Ashenville and do the token turn in daily. So you should go and do it. Before it was once a week, but it's every day now. Very free. For the weapon, I went ahead and put the automatic crowd pummeler. A lot of you guys might be surprised, but the on news 3 minute cooldown is too good. And the speed gives us a lot more exorcism procs, which is our main damage dealer, almost. If you can farm the soul thras, uh, it's known that it's buffed. However, I think it's still very RNG. Some people get it in one to two runs. Some people take a couple of days of farm, kind of like me. How I would use this is I would use the automatic crowd pummeler. Once the buff you gain is gone, you would swap over to Soul Thrash if the boss isn't killed already. Some bosses take less than 30 seconds or maybe 30 seconds level over. So depending on how your team fights it, use the pummeler, then swap off to Soul Thrash. And Soul Thrash is good because it's so fast and you get a lot of extra proc off of it. For the glove, I am going to put the Vice Grip of the Tiger off of ZF once again. For the belt, we have Gerda of Bestial. Uh, this drops from Black Rock Depths. A lot of items from Black Rock Depths. Hands I went over. This is from No More Gone. Just need a token. Very easy to get. Uh, God Slayer Greaves. This requires 15 offering. If you want to start the offering quest and you don't know about it, uh, you go over here and there should be a troll lady that gives you a quest. I forgot the quest name. But she's going to ask you to bring in three of these green markers, which you can see right there. And once you turn that in, you could buy these items. And not only do you get the boots, you could get the ring, which is super good, and the trinket. These are going to stay very, very good for the paladins. Probably the rest of the tier. And where you get them is either you do ZF, so that you're killing two birds with one stone. You can farm your sword and your glove. And at the last boss next to the Godzilla, you should see a spider walking through. And you blow the horn, which is right here. And you can kill the spider. Same thing in Marudon. I think Marudon is the fastest one right now. Next to Princess at the end, you should see a big dinosaur. Once you kill that, you will get these wild offerings. And once you kill it, um, blow the big horn on Princess, log out right underneath it, then you'll spawn in the gate. I went ahead and got my ring first, and got a little bit of wild offering, and then we went for the other pieces, like the weapon and the glove. This next ring is the Felwood wild offering, this trinket is the wild offering, very very good items. 
Uh, for the trinket, your next best in slot is from Nomargon. I believe this is the same for the raid. Yeah. So you want to continue doing Nomargon. And for the Libram, I went ahead and put the one from STV because it gives you more attack power against dragons. And in this raid tier, most of the bosses are dragons. We do have a fight where we fight undead. I think it's called Ogom and draw something. You, you could use this for that boss. 15% attack power. For this uh, enchant, you do not want this. Um, instead of having 7 weapon damage, you want to have the 3% haste, which is the iron counterweight for both weapons. And that's pretty much it for the uh, pre raid best in slot. You should have 5 hit. If I change anything in here, I will write it down all in the comments. Now we are going for the raid biz. But the helmet is Sunken Temple. Great helm of the nightmare. Very, very good helmet. And once again, you can use the tempered helmet if it's on cooldown. Because speed is everything. Just like the automatic crop pummeler. For Red Paladin, it's a bit weird how the class is designed, but uh, we're basically fighting for procs. For the shoulders, we are going for the crafted item. If you cannot afford the crafted, you can go for the one above. For the cloak, this is off of Sunken Temple as well. Pantheon of the Fur Cloak. For the chest, these are the three set piece. And yes, we do want the three set piece. For it gives you hit and 5% chance to get an extra attack. I heard this was nerfed to be lower. I'm not sure if this is registered here or not. For the wrist, same wrist from the pre raid business slot. Warsong Ghost Reputation. For the weapon, uh, sadly, Paladins need fast weapon. We don't really do well with slow weapon. You can play it, but it doesn't do as well. I might try Command again with Divine Storm, yet I don't see it being too hot. If it does come to an end where it works out, I will let you guys know. For PvP Enjoyers, you can go with the Big Swingers. Parasomnia, Chieftain, Tale of Veranicus, anything here is good. Big Weapon, Seal of Command, and make sure you Stun and Judgment, Repentance and Judgment for bigger damage. I still play Seal of Command for PvP. For Glove, you want the Disease Ridden Plate Fist off of Sunken Temple once again. For the Belt, Girdle of Bestial is still doing a lot better. I went ahead and compared it with the Atoll, which is supposed to be the better version, but you get more attack power from Bestial, so I'm sticking with Bestial. For the Pants, we're using the 3 set, and the Boots, the 3 set. If you don't want to do the 3 set, you can uh, go ahead and wear the God Slayer, which has 14 agility, 14 strength. For the ring, we're going to stick with Band of the Wild since it gives you hit chance with all spell and attack by 1%. And the last one will be Drake Claw Band of the Berserker. Same thing, improves your chance to hit with all spell and attack by 1%. A little bit more stamina too than the Marathon one. For the Trinket, it's going to stay the same and the Libram is going to stay the same. This set will give you 6% hit and a lot of attack power. And that's pretty much it for gearing. Alright, and finally, talents. I don't know if I have much to go over since I've done so many guides. I don't know if I should even talk about them. I think you guys all understand for now. Uh, but I will go ahead and redo them. So, Blessing of Might for bigger might damage. Improve Seal of Crusader. You always want to put your Seal of Crusader first. In every boss fight, you want to start with this, put it in, and then you do Martyrdom or Seal of Command. Whichever you're doing. But since we're PvEing, we're going to go ahead and use the Seal of Martyrdom. Next, we're going to go ahead and put into Judgment to Opening Conviction. And going for Pursuit of Justice for a little bit of movement. Everything else here, you don't really need. We're not going to want to parry bosses, right? Even though it increases our haste and we could hit faster. You don't want to try bank on that. This is mainly for PvP and improve Retribution R. We're going to be using Sancti Tiara. So no need for that. And the only thing that really helps us is Benediction, where we get a little bit more mana. So we're going to press it until these two unlock, and we're going to press it one more time so that we open Vengeance for big damage. This is for 10% holy damage, and this gives you 15% bonus to physical and holy damage for 8 seconds. Stacks up to 5. And then 2 hand weapon specialization. For this part, we're going to go for the strength increase, and Seal of Righteous, since this buffs our Martyrdom. 
then we're gonna put in consecration and that's pretty much it for pvp um i i i didn't plan on going over pvp for this video but i think i'm gonna try out this side instead of over here even though i like the mana and strength i think we're gonna just put into devo and guardian precision for more hits since in pvp i'm missing a little bit of hit chance and this will allow me to get bob faster and free them faster which will help greatly compared to just having flat base stats it's up to you though if you want to just do big damage and not go um rather than uh having freedoms right and lastly d rune for the head we are going with wrath for chest seal of martyrdom uh wrist improve hammer wrath i'm not gonna lie i like hammer righteous i used it a lot to tank some places i'm wondering if we can use flurry axe and do some righteous hammer after we use crowd pummeler i haven't tested it out though on bosses where there's two i feel like this could bang or adds i guess for hands crusader strike obviously waste sheet of light leg exorcism auto for i don't think any of these change because this is like the bank of our damage right now and that's it i hope you found this helpful if you have any questions do let me know in the comments i will try to look at least the first two weeks and reply if you guys have any questions good luck on the grind and i will see you on azeroth peace out boys